The Godot team and contributors have been hard at work and Godot 4.2 is here, packed with incredible features. I'll share with you my favorites and also what you think is worth talking about because I ask you on the community post. For the full list of new features, check out the post, link in the description. Let's start with big news coming to the rendering both in 2D and 3D. 2D HDR is finally here, which means we get to use Glow again, yeah! Glow is super important and can really make your game pop, so it's awesome having this finally available in Godot 4. For the quick explanation here, Glow requires color values going above 1, which we call HDR. In Godot 3, it was available for 2D, but it was some sort of hack if I understood correctly. Now, we have a proper 2D HDR implementation, awesome. Another big news for 3D this time is AMD FSR, the open source upscaling technique similar to NVIDIA DLSS. This can be extremely useful to run very demanding games on lots of hardware, or even preserve battery life on handled device, like the Steam Deck for example. To use it, simply head over to Settings, Rendering, and under Scaling 3D, choose AMD FSR 1.0 or 2.2. I don't know if it counts in rendering, but the new Particles rework is awesome. Particles were reworked to provide more stylized controls. This would require a video on its own, but let me tell you a few things I'm excited about. Amount ratio lets you select a percentage of particles amount that should be emitted. Interp to end allows you to interpolate the particles to the end of their lifetime, super useful to smoothly finish an effect without just stopping the emitting. Without going into too much details, you have more controls on how you emit particles, such as an offset, scale, and also inheriting the node's velocity. Speaking of velocity, you can change the pivot, have direction velocity along an axis, put a hard limit, and also scale over velocity. You can see on screen some example of what's possible with the new features. In Compute Shaders, you can now create custom texture objects. Compute Shaders are just like Fragment and Vertex Shaders, little pieces of code running on the GPU. But instead of rendering pixels, they are used to do only calculations, taking advantage of the massive parallel power of GPUs. With the ability of creating custom texture objects, it means you can work directly with the rendering server and rendering device to create textures to be used directly. This is demonstrated in the water effect made in the Compute Texture demo, where the water texture texture with ripples is calculated in a compute shader to populate a texture that is then displayed. You also get access to a set of API calls to compute code on the render thread. The API is useful if your compute shader needs to synchronize with the main rendering device. This is pretty advanced stuff, but if you understand, you're probably excited about it. 2D Navmap is brought to parity with the 3D navigation with the ability to bake the Navmap, supporting physics bodies, mesh instances, polygons, and tile maps. This means you'll be able to pre-compute the Navmap to have better performance during gameplay. The tile map system was completely reworked in 4.0, and it was a major point of discussion. Some great improvements were added, but some features were removed, such as the ability to rotate tiles. The contributors have been hard at work, and the tile map has received lots of fixes and usability improvements. Most notably, the flipping and rotation of individual tiles and pattern is back. I'll let you check the full list of changes, as there is quite a lot of them. GDScript 2.0 has been awesome, but it's getting even better with this update. Strict mode allows you to have warning reporting all instances of untyped code, forcing you to type everything. To allow that, for loops can now be typed too. I love this feature as I'm trying to type my code as often as I can. To organize your code, you now have access to regions. You define a region with a special comment, and you can now show or hide it easily. Lovely. Another simple but very cool feature is an upgrade on regular and documentation comments. To do, fix me, etc. are highlighted, and you can use at deprecated and experimental for documentation. A pretty big feature if you're working with threaded code has arrived. The script debugger now fully supports threaded code, including execution stack and breakpoints. No more pain while trying to understand why your threaded calculation is wrong. No, I'm joking. Threaded code will always be a pain. <laughs> Not that I particularly love GD extensions, but I know they enable awesome features in Godot, such as other physics engines or language bindings. And more so, any improvements coming to them is welcomed. In editor, hot reloading will allow you to develop them much more easily. This means you don't have to restart the editor to handle changes in your GD extension lib. I can't wait to see more use for this amazing tool. Another big update is the ability to load dynamic libraries on web platforms, which means you can use GD extension on web builds. 
Small thing but very welcomed, you can now use native file dialog instead of the Godot's built-in one. This is super useful when making application with Godot as users often prefer using the built-in explorer because they are more familiar with them. In the same vein, copy-paste is also available for macOS, Windows and Linux. There's a lot going on with XR, and I mean a lot. To make it quick, better support for OpenXR and its platform-specific extensions, Mac support, new headset support, more work on the XR tools, which are useful tools and demo for XR with Godot, a template to quick start your next project, and finally new features are coming to OpenXR, eye tracking, new hand interactions, and more. As you can see, lots of exciting stuff going on. One last cool feature, you can set custom colors on folders. It's small, but will go a long way in making it easier to organize your project. Thanks to the patrons on Patreon for making this video possible. If you want to support me and get access to exclusive content, behind the scenes and early access videos and projects, you can support me on Patreon starting at $1.50 per month. Join me at patreon.com slash elliptic. Those were my favorite features, but there is still a lot of things to talk about. Let's go over other cool features, but in less detail. Forced integer scaling enabled in project settings will ensure you have a square pixel grid, no matter the size or aspect ratio of your game. Very useful for the pixel art purists out there. Multiplayer synchronizer supports synchronization of more things, such as sub-resources properties, transform components, and other things, without having to sync the entire object. Scene replication also has a better UI. Also a security fix in the Enet multiplayer peer and Enet connection should prevent denial of service attacks. Uh, pretty useful, right? It's available in 4.0.4, 4.1.2, and 4.2. You use C-sharp. First of all, who hurt you? You can tell me. Don't worry, there's also stuff for you. Godot now uses .NET 8, and you can use it for mobile on Android and iOS. Yay! Support is also there for web platforms, so that's very good news. There are lots of other improvements, but I don't use C-sharp, so I'll let you read. Speaking of iOS though, let's move on to editor enhancements. There's now the ability to one-click deploy on iOS. If I was Apple, I would sell you this as revolutionary, but we've had this for a while on Android. This means you can now deploy and remote debug your device straight from Godot. Super convenient. Blender-like hotkeys were introduced in Godot 4. Think G to move, R to rotate, S to scale. They now support numeric values, such as R, X, 90 to rotate 90 degrees in X. Super useful to quickly and precisely move, rotate, or scale objects. The 3D viewport is now cleaner, showing you stuff only when it's relevant. This is good news as it brings more clarity and readability. Small feature but very welcomed, the ability to choose the installation folder for add-ons. That's it! Pretty cool, right? Editor plugins now have access to the editor screen more easily and can also prompt warnings. Graph Edit and Graph Node have been reworked and they look better. You can also create custom graph nodes with only what you want. Video Player has seamless looping, Rich Text Label has improved image handling, padding, proportional sizing, and tooltips. There are also changes on the theming side, but I'll let you take a look. There are some interesting things happening on the 3D import side. You don't need to restart when changing import settings when importing 3D stuff, which is pretty cool. The preview is also much more powerful now, letting you preview animations right in the importer. You also have more options available, letting you choose precisely how things should be imported. The project manager has been rearranged a bit to make it more intuitive. Some buttons have been moved to the top of the window. I'm still not a huge fan of the project manager, but I don't know exactly what I would change, so yeah. That's it for me. Subscribe for more content like this and like this video to help support the channel. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.